What's up gang members from Wyoming, it's Jimothan Minecraft the 4th and today we have a preview for an update coming to survive the disasters. After I talk about the preview I'll also go over the return of the unusable server listing and how it affects the game again. But without further ado let's get into this flimmery. The post says, hello, it's been a while. For this next season, there are plans for some new maps and potentially some brand new disasters in store for you. The main goal of this update is to diversify the game, and I wanted to hold a small poll for one of the new maps. In the spirit of new content, we also want to make some more map vehicles. Would you guys rather rock a motorcycle can hold only one player or a golf cart holds two? Cast your votes in the reacts below. Six days later, another post was made concluding the first one, and this one says, wow, over 100 votes on the new vehicle for one of the three upcoming maps, and almost all so far have gone to the golf cart. Your prayers have been heard and answered. The next map vehicle is the golf cart. Since feedback was so overwhelmingly positive, 95 to nine, the golf cart will also be a three-seater instead of only two seats so that everyone can get a ride. The content update is scheduled for an autumn release. Now obviously some big takeaways from this announcement is the addition of new maps, vehicles, and possibly disasters. But a lot of people overlook or ignore a very important sentence in the first segment where Miss Mina says the main goal of this update is to diversify the game. A big factor that keeps players playing in this game is obviously its massive replayability. There are around 90 disasters in standard and 68 in hardcore. The game also has, I think, 21 maps that are currently in the game. But until somewhat recently, maps were a big issue for replayability in this game, and that's because there was nothing really special to them. Now don't get me wrong, aesthetically they were all very diverse. One map has you on a beach, the next an acid cave, and another one you're on the fucking moon. But gameplay wise this basically has no effect on the people wanting to go to that map because people tend to vote maps that are generally better for surviving. You can easily identify these maps by two things. Does the map have indestructible high ground and does the map have indestructible cover? If the map lacked in one or both of these compartments it won't be voted nearly as much because players don't really have an incentive to shoot themselves in the kneecap to go to a weaker map. But as of recently, it seems like that's starting to change. Let's look at three maps recently added and how they changed the status quo of map voting. Starting off, we have Fragile Farm, which isn't particularly a strong map itself, but has the unique aspect of letting you ride animals. Even if the animals are broken or destroyed, if the seat is still there, you can use a rocket launcher to boost yourself around the map, which overall makes the map really fun and actually special compared to the other maps. Moving on from Fragile, some of you might be shocked because inherently this map doesn't contain anything special, and you would be right. The map I'm talking about is Sleepy Swamp. Now what's so special about this map you ask? Well it's actually an easter egg that has a 1% chance of spawning which is some person dancing in the background. Now I'm not really interested in the easter egg itself, I'm more interested in the idea of there being a percent chance for the map to be different. For example, you could create a secret room kinda like the cave from the old Sonic map but it wouldn't always spawn. Even if it's just an easter egg that doesn't contain any gameplay differences, it would be cool to see more unique things like this that change the map from a static unchanging place to a somewhat dynamic area that that can change, thus giving more replayability. Now onto the last map, we have Desert Base, which is arguably the worst map in the game for survivability. Desert Base has no indestructible high ground or indestructible cover, making it the weakest map in the game, but it also introduces two new map unique things, one being the full healing medkits in these camps, and the other, the infamous Jeep. The Jeep is probably the reason most people would vote this map because it's the only map with a multi-seater vehicle that you can ride around in with friends. These maps are perfect examples of what diversity in maps can be, and I hope we see more of it with the three new upcoming maps. This doesn't mean the older map should be left without change though, because you can add a lot to already existing features, like the light mechanic in Panic Pyramid. All the lights do right now is dim every 85 seconds, which just makes it a little bit darker and basically does nothing. You could easily make this more interactable by creating events that only happen when the lights are out, like occasionally spawning undead enemies such as zombies, vampires, or even a map unique enemy like a mummy. This would either encourage the player to turn the lights back on, or they can be greedy and try to block the occasionally spawning enemies for Bloxer. But that would come with the risk of being overwhelmed while trying to survive the current disasters, thus creating more interaction between the player and the map. This one might be a little crazy, but you can make it so that Wacky, since it has a huge fan in the middle of the map, 
would blow away any mystery disaster fog. This wouldn't be unearned, however, as a couple of players would all have to stand on a different button scattered across the map at the same time to power the fan in the middle. This would encourage teamwork among the players, which would help the map and the player interaction altogether. You can even do small changes like changing the healing crystal on Glantisy. Currently, the Glantisy crystals when touched heal for 20 HP and take a bit to recharge. Instead, you could make it so that the crystal can heal up to 100 HP, but it would need to be charged for a longer time span, and the level of charge would be indicated by the color of the crystals, such as red being 0 to 33%, yellow being 34 to 66%, and green being 67 to 100%. You'd be able to touch it at any time, but you would only get the amount of healing it was charged at, and it would be reset back down to zero when you did touch it. At this point, I'm just spewing ideas that come to my head, but that's the point. There are so many things that can be done to make these maps more interactable and replayable, which would give this game a refreshing new taste. That's all for me today. I hope these new upcoming maps are actually different, and maybe in the future, the older maps will also be improved upon.